Masechis Bove Kama Yud Omud Beis. Today's page is Yud Aleph Omud Aleph, but Yud Omud Beis is where we are still right now. We definitely have to go into what we did yesterday. For the next four minutes, we're going to revise, review, riruru. What did we see yesterday? When a person, uh, when one's, when one person's shore gored the other shore. Then what happens then? Let's say the other shore, the, the one who died, Bogdan Emes, yeah, Mr. Shore died. And then what happens? He used to be worth a thousand, whatever he wants, thousand dollars. Now the dead body is worth three hundred dollars because you can sell it to Tim McKenzie or Tom McKinley or a lot of other people, Yan Chun Chan. Yeah, you can sell it to the Chinese. It's a dead bull. Yeah, it's not a sitting bull. That's for the Indians, yeah. You, you can sell it to <clears throat> you can sell it to whoever you want, yeah, to whichever chief. And therefore, it's not like I caused you a damage of a thousand. I caused you a damage of seven hundred because you still have the the corpse worth three hundred. The question was, how would that be paid? Who is in charge of metapel benevela? Who's in charge of taking care of the nevela? Meaning, who is actually left with? that Balagan with the headache of selling the animal. <clears throat> Not the Iriyah, no, the Iriyah, they would like to take the money. No, the Iriyah, the cleaning the garbage is a different story. But first of all, the Iriyah, no, no, no. The question is who pays, which means who, who takes care of it? Do we say that the Mazik gets an Avela and he has to pay, the Mazik stays with the $300 Nevela, and he'll have to start selling it, Nevela for sale in eBay, or Nevela Butrefa for Goim.com, that he'll have to deal with that, and to pay, he'll have to pay the Nizak $1,000 clean, do we say that, or do we say no? The Mazik will be more cooler, the Mazik will tell the Nizak, listen Mr. Nizak, you are staying with the $300 Nevela, you deal with it, you do whatever has to be done with it, and really, I'll only give you 700. That's a question, well, it wasn't even a question because we saw three different different sources to tell us that the Nizak is the one which metapel benevela, takes care of the nevela, the Nizak stays with, no, thank you, the Nizak stays with the nevela, he has an Avela, the Avela remains yours, keep it uh, and do it with it whatever you want, try to sell it, try to, I don't know what, uh, Take, take it to the taxidermist, yeah, whatever. And the mice, I'll only give it the 700. And that is the halaha. And we have three different sources for it. We have one source was from a person hitting the animal. One was Shomer Sochor, which was Poshea. If it was Poshea, that he has to pay. Add the trefa, add the trefa, up until the trefa, not more. And we had the third source after that. We also had the third source of of a one gore, one shore going the other. Very nice. Now the Gemara comes with a question. It's now time to start today's shear. Actually, before I start the actual shear, I'll tell you a question asked, which I saw yesterday, I saw some Mephoshim yesterday, Baruch Hashem, Rabbi Akiva Eger. Akiva Eger, oh, most, one of the most, most Chosh of Achroinim. Rabbi Eger asks a question which sort of bothered me in the back of my mind. What are we going to do with the Nevela? What shall we do with the drunk with a with a dead Nevela? What sell it to the guy? I'm asking you a question. Am I allowed to start a business? A Kiva Tachtal Nevela shop? Can you start a Nevela shop, Nevela Trefa, and sell it only to Goyim? If a person comes and he's a Yid, I will not sell him, I'll only sell the Goyim. We have a, a sign, no entry for Jews, doesn't look nice. No. Okay, you are all right, except for you, sorry. That's okay. Which means, thank you. <laughs> Says Rabbi basically what you guys are saying, to start a business is also. Now, for the Mazik to give it to the Nizak, it's not called business because he's just paying off like a debt. You know, it's paying for, for Nezik. Now, for the for the Nizak, who really have to start selling it to McKenzie or McKinley, yeah, or Thompson, then it's not called a business because it's called Bakoy. It's a one-off thing that came to his hands. If someone somehow yarshan the pig, I don't know, somebody was Yorish, got Yerusha from his uh, Chiloni father, I don't know, something that is 
not of a desor, which would be also a stray for food, he's allowed to sell it as one of not to make a business out of it. But that's an akuda which Rabbi Kivager mentions. Okay, the seder. Now let's start <clears throat> today's shir. Omar Rav Kana, Rav. Rav Kana asks Rav a very, very strong question. Ella, time at the cost of Rachman of Amesi Eloi. <clears throat> the Torah says Amesi Eloi. What is it mean Amesi Eloi? To who? To the Nizak. The Nizak will have to deal with the dead body and not the Mazik. Halav hachi, if not for that, if not for the Pasuk telling me that, Hava Amina, I would have thought, Nevela de Mazik Avia. You want to tell me the Nevela is the responsibility of the Mazik, meaning the Mazik has to take back the Nevela, to take the Nevela and give him $1,000 clean, the whole thing. Is that so? It doesn't make sense, Bechlal, to say that. Why? Hashta, now, I Isla Lididei Kamat Reifes. Imagine yourself, the Mazik has a whole freezer full of trefas. No, he happens to be a shoichet, and he has trefas because, you know, sometimes a shoichet messes up, right. and he happens to have trefas worth $1,000. And you know what he could tell him? Yo, he lay. He could have told, given, he could have given in all the $1,000, the entire sum of 1000 he could have given it to him in the form and shape of nevelas. Why? Because we learned recently, the Omar Mar, it says, Yoshiv, it says Yoshiv, right? Kesef Yoshiv Lebeolov, Le'abu Shve Kesef Afilu Subin. Ha-ha! Which means, if I want, as a mazik, to pay the nizak without cash, I have cash, yeah, it says in Aloha, I can pay him as a mazik, I can pay him with any commodity I want, even the garbagest one. As long as, of course, it makes up the, for the same amount of money, let's say I have subin. Subin is considered to be very low kind of flour loosely translated as brand, it's not exactly brand, yeah? In other words, something that's really bad, Chinese toys, Chinese toys from Ovis Ubonim, yeah? They're really not the best thing you can imagine, they break after half a minute or half an hour, yeah? And yet, if I have a lot of Chinese toys, I can pay with Chinese toys. If so, what's your problem? What's even the half a minute to say otherwise? If the Mazik wants, of course the Mazik can pay with even with dead bodies. If so, of course, continues the Gemara, did they, me boy, question mark, exclamation mark, his own Nevela, you have to tell me that I can pay with a Nevela, which means, well, again, let, let me just, you know, pinpoint the question. You're telling me a big Kiddush, the Torah says three times, the Torah Kedosh, which doesn't waste a word, tells me three times what? It's telling me that it if the Mazik damaged him $700 and you have an avail of 300, you tell the Nizak, keep the avail of 300 and I'll give you 700. And he can't tell me, no, no, no. The Nizak cannot say, <laughs> you take the 300 Nevela, you deal with it and give me $1,000 cash clean. Of course he can't say that. He cannot, why? Because the Mazik can pay with whichever way he wants. He can pay with secondhand shoes, with half rotten tomatoes, as long as we're something that's, that will make it $2,000, of course. He can pay with whichever way he wants. So see, you, you want payment? Yes, the, the debt nevela, which is worth 300, which happens to be anyway in your backyard, is the payment. <laughs> I'm paying you, but you just keeping the nevela. That's one form of payment. And the rest, I'll give you $700 in cash or with $700, Chinese toys in Japanese, uh, whatever. What? Or carcasses, exactly. It's, uh, yeah, of course, all the more so his own answers the Gemara, and therefore the Gemara now changes uh, direction. Ela, you know, the Pesach is telling you something different. Ela, when the last line of Yud Amud Beis, the very last line, the bottom line, Lepchas Nevela, bam, 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 Pchas Nevela. What does Pchas Nevela mean? As we all know, Nevelas, before, uh, before freezers were invented, yeah, many years ago, so Nevelas, are uh, they tend to stink and eventually they decay <clears throat> and a nevela of two days ago was worth more than a nevela of today if an animal died two days ago i can sell it for let's say 300 dollars. i assume that two days later i don't know i can sell it maybe for 150. i can sell it to the mckenzie's poor cousin who would do with you know just about uh, meat that's just about fresh would take the risk of having a uh, whatever a bad stomach in other words nevelas decay and they eventually rather quickly become worth less and less the diminishing price and therefore that's called pras nevela and that is a chiddush what does pras nevela mean pras nevela means says yeah we can see it in rashi 
let's see Rashi inside. Let's see Rashi inside, okay? Just one Rashi. It's the last Rashi in the page, so it's easy to detect. You know the Potsuk is telling me that the Mazik, that the Nizak takes care of the Nvela, not the Mazik, it's telling me the following. That's what the Torah says. The Mish'as Misa, from the time of death, Kai Bershuse de Nizak. Ah. At the time when my, I'm the Mazik, okay? When my show gored yours, yeah? At that very second when he died, and went to the Ganadian of the bulls, I'm joking, yeah, and went uh, and died. At that second, it was worth how much? $300, okay? And that's what I'm gonna pay you. Now they went to court to, uh, uh, one week later. One week later, says the Nizak, look, one week later, my behem is worth only $100 at best, yeah? And therefore, I don't mean best market, yeah? At best, it's worth $100, right? And now what? So now you would claim, Hundred dollars, you you owe me now how much? You owe me nine hundred. It was worth a thousand, and now look, this animal now is worth uh, one hundred only. It says no, no, no. Let's look at Rashi. If it started stinking, now it's worth less. From the time of death, a week ago, it was worth 300. When the din takes place now, it's only worth 100. That 200 of difference between a fresh nevela and a rotten nevela, that, my friend, says the mazik to the nizak, is your responsibility. I'll only pay you how much. Much, I'll pay you 700 and not 900. I'll pay you like the time of the Nezek, not like the time of the Dean. Meshalem le Mazik, Masha Nezek Havi Yeser Aladomim, he only pays him the difference of the Domim Shosh and the Bela Shove, Bishas Misa, only how much he was worth at the time of death. You got that? In other words, the, the time, the cutoff point where the Mazik has to pay the Nezek was the way he was worth at the time of death. So let's say he was worth 300. I'm going to pay you how much? 700. And keep it in the veil. What's the logic behind that? Well, first of all, the Torah says that. Secondly, you can look at the very, very, very last line of Tosfos in the page. Says Tosfos, miyad hoyaloy lemocho. We're going to see later an exception for that. But Tosfos says the Mazik can tell the Nizak at the very moment of what of death. You could have sold it, as far as I'm concerned. You could have sold it right away. Right away, start getting in touch with Goim, with uh, I don't know Arabs. Actually, they buy some kind of shita. It's your problem. You have the novella, right? You have to sell it. The fact that you didn't sell it, you didn't manage to sell it, didn't try to sell it, it's not my responsibility. After my damage was done, it was worth 300 in the market. Had you been, you know, had you been uh, diligent enough, you could have sold it right there and then. And therefore, the fact that in your reshus, kilo I paid you, in your reshus, in your domain, it became worth less, that's not my business. And therefore, at that point, the mazik doesn't have to pay more. Okay? That is the chidosh of chas nevela. Yes. Okay. Says, oh, lema pchas nevela tonoi. Let us say, the Gemara now wants to suggest that pchas nevela is really mechlokes tonoi. Mechlokes tonoi, really, what we just said a second ago, is mechlokes tonoi, meaning the fact that if the nevela was worth, let's say, 300 at the time of death, at the very second of death, when the horns got in, hey, it was worth 300. And later on, when they sit in court, when they stand in court, it's, let's say, worth 100. So do you pay, like, only the difference between 1,000 and 300, and not the difference between the fresh novella and the small novella and the, the rotten novella. You don't pay that. That's already the, the Nizak's problem. Is that so? That we want to say, maybe the Mechlok is Tanoi, the Tanya. It says about the Shoimer Soho, Im Torif, Torif, Yveu, Eid, Uopa, Afapa. Now we're moving to Yud Aleph, Omud Aleph, today's page. It says about Shoimer Soho, Shoimer Soho is a person who has to guard things with money, and therefore is chayev by gnev v'aveda, and he is, yeah, and if only by oynes is potu. Let's say he's looking after an animal, and the animal was devoured by the wolves. Now, he has to bring an aid, says Yudal Zvunalef, yovi edim shenito fa be'oynes, bring edim, witnesses, that it's not your fault, and it was really an oynes, the wolves came and, and he was absolutely helpless and hapless, he couldn't do anything, be'oynes, upotu, then is potu. Okay, that's very nice, that's a shot of the posuk. 
Abashol Omer, Abashol says something else. Yavi Iduda Lebezdin. Iduda doesn't mean Idud encouragement. Iduda means the dead body. Yeah, because it says about Benjamin, it says in Bereshis, ad shalal, which means in the morning, Binyomin will eat ad, they will eat the, the, they devour the meat, they devour what is to be devoured, which really means Binyomin's, the Mizbeach, three parts, three quarters of the Mizbeach, where the Korbanos were brought, were by Binyomin, only one quarter was by Yehuda. So Binyamin is Ki'ilu devouring the Korbanus, is eating the Korbanus, which is a good thing. Valer Bichalek Shalal also means uh, Binyamin, uh, it also means Shaul and, and Shaul, Esther and Mordechai, Lomashane. Bikitzer, the word Iduda means the corpse. Says Abba Shaul, argues on Tanakama and says, you bring the Idud, you bring the animal to Beisdin. <laughs> you bring the dead corpse to Beisdin in order to estimate it, to evaluate it and know how much it's worth. What exactly is the story? What's the argument? Tanakama says, I don't care how much it's worth. And Abashol says, yes, I do. Abashol says, yes, you have to measure. You have to know. You have to evaluate and assess how much is the animal worth now as opposed to the time of death. What's the story here? What's the dynamics here between Tanakama and Abashol? My love must be what? The Hakami Flagi must be that's the argument. The Masova, by the way, I'm reading against Rashi and like Rabbeinu Hananel. Rashi was very difficult to me. I'm reading like Rabbeinu Hananel now. The Masova, Pchas Nevele Deniza Kavi. The first opinion, which is Tanakama, this is the Rabbeinu Hananel, says Pchas Nevele is the problem of the Nizak. It's a Nizak's problem. Yeah, no, it's a Nizak. I don't have to estimate it or evaluate it or anything. Why? Because I only have to know how much it's worth at the time of death. And whatever, whatever happened after that, that's not my problem, says the Mazik. It's the Nizak's headache, not mine. Yeah, like we said. Yeah, like we said all along. It belongs to the Nizak. Pras Nevela is the Nizak, right? That's it. It goes to the Nizak, which means I gored you, or my show gored you, 300, what happened later? Nishma Geshecht, not, not my problem. That's Tanakama. That's what there's no evaluation in based in. Abba Shol says, no, no, no. You have to estimate how much it's worth now. Why? Because you have to pay him. The Mazik has to pay the Nizak the way it is worth now, or worth less now. Not 700. He has to pay him 900 cash, because now he only has 100. Which means that difference between a fresh Nevela and a bad Nevela, which, let's say, 200, that is, yes, the responsibility of the mazik, not the nizak. The, the mazik cannot shake it off, brush it off. Okay, so maybe what you just said is really a mechloik, yes? Says the Gemara, la, 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 la. We stand by what we said. The kula alma, the nizak. Everyone agrees it belongs, so to speak, the responsibility is the nizak, like we said. The mazik has to pay him like a fresh nevela. When my shore gored yours, or when your shore fell into my pit, it became from a thousand, descended to 300. My friend, 300 cash, uh, no, 700 cash, keep the 300, and I will tell you, bye, that's it. I'm not mechuyav on what happened later. However, here comes Tzvi's nekuda. Here, here we come, Tzvi. So what is the argument? So who does care about the, so why does Abishol indicate that we care something about the Nevela's current status? Nobody cares about it. We only care about how the Nevela was worth at the beginning, at the actual time of Nezik. So what's Abishol indicating here? Torah Nevela means who's in charge of actually, and who has to pay, and who has to actually take the Nevela out of the bowl. Let's say the Nevela was hit, was damaged, was gored in a faraway place, a few streets away, or in the Midbar. Back then, the cities were so small, the towns, you know, a faraway place would be the Midbar. But let's say you live in London, which is humongous, or you live in New York, and uh, he was on the other side of town. Who's was going to schlep it and bring it to the whole truck of Nevela, who was in charge of that. Let's say that it fell into a pit. Who's going to take it out of the pit? You have to bring a crane. You have to... Who's in charge of that? B'toch Nevela Kamiflagi. Tanakama says that even the Toyach Nevela, the one in charge is an Isaac, still. It's your responsibility. I gored you. I mean, my show gored yours. I'm so sorry. I'll pay you for the nezik. But the actual toirach, the actual uh, work, the hard work of getting it from place A to B back to the house of the nizak is a mechloik. And the Kama says it's a nizak's fault. It's a nizak's responsibility. And Abashol would say it's a mazik responsibility. 
that Tanya, meaning the Mazik is the one who actually has to pay and take care of the Nevela coming out of the bowl into the street or into more accessible place, which is accessible for the Nizak. Now it's in the Nizak sands and that's it. And soon we'll see, by the way, a very big exception to the rule, one minute, we'll see it in that in Toysis in Talmud Arashva. Wait a second, wait a second. Vatanya. Vatanya here is not a question. Usually Vatanya is a question. Vatanya, now we say no. Vatanya is something to assert what we just said. Acherim oimrim. Acherim here is like Abashol. The other opinion in the Mishnah, which here is equivalent to Abashol. Minayin shal bal habor lehalois shor mi boiroi. How do we know that it's the bow's own responsibility once a shore whoop, fell inside, how do we know that it's a balabo not only has to pay for the show, he only he also has to pay for the crane for the I don't know removal company for the area, private area service to take it out of the bow into the whatever into the outside to the street level. How do you know it's his responsibility? And this is a halocha Talmud Loimar Kesef Yoshib Lebeolov. The uh, you have to give it, <laughs> we are reading, we are punctuating the postuk differently, yeah, in a very interesting way. The postuk says, by you return money to the owner, compensate the owner with money because it's your board that did it, and the dead corpse should be his. Who's his? The Nizak. Now, the mace, he would say, you have to give him money and the mace. You actually have to give him the mace. You have to make the dead body accessible to the who? To the owner of the dead body. That also says the Talmud Harash Baharosh. Thank you, Otsar Chochma. A lot of exotic reshoining which I never knew existed. There is Talmud Harash Baharosh. What does Talmud Harash Baharosh say? Talmud of two great people. He says, Nafkamina from money. I hope I'm avoiding a question here, although I'll hear a question soon. He says, what, what did we say up until now? If, whose responsibility is it to sell it to Mackenzie McKinley and Pakuku? Is who? Then he's like, I, I paid you at the time of, at what happened at the time of death. I'm sorry, it's my responsibility. I'm a big boy, I'm paying you. Now go and sell it. You can't sell it. You, do the, you live in Kiryat Sefer, so move, go to an Arab village, you'll buy it very nicely. Now, what happens though, if it's inside the bowl? And let's say now it's in a bowl and it's slowly decaying. Now comes the, or quickly, now comes the Bala bowl and tells the Bala show, listen, you take it out. It's not my responsibility. And the Bala show says, no, Mr. Bohr, look at the Gemara of Bavakami Adalif. Haven't you been to Omidiyomi? Didn't you watch on YouTube? We don't know that it's really the responsibility of you. And they start arguing. And meanwhile, the boar has no freezer. It's not in Lakewood. There's no freezer there yet. The boar is what? Is Bajut? It stinks and it stinks very quickly. It's decaying quickly. And meanwhile, when finally the Mazik takes it out of the boar after dragging his feet, in a surprise, surprise, instead of 300, it's worth 100. Who has to pay for that difference? The Balabal. Here's an exception to the rule. When do we say that the Baal, the Nizak has to pay? When it's accessible to you, it's in your backyard, and you've dragged your feet, or I don't know what happened to you. I'm sorry, your, your grandmother died and your daughter got married. Okay, so what? Lamaisa, you could have, should have, would have done it. You didn't. I'm not paying for that difference of time. That meanwhile decayed when it was your responsibility, your ability to do it. But Shankin, if it fell into the bowl, or let's say it's in a faraway place, but the Mazik is the one that should actually make it accessible to the Nizak, and the mazik was dragging his feet and meanwhile was decaying, then it's a mazik responsibility and he has to pay the difference. Say the Rishonim. I can hear a question now, but there is another question as well. Yeah, I'll hear a question now. And then we continue. Okay, Omale Abaye. Omale Abaye. Line starts with the word Omale Abaye. Omale Abaye Lerove. Abaye asked Rova. Hi, Torah Nevela, that business of the Torah Nevela, the, the exertion, the hard work of getting the Nevela, let's say from the pit to the street level, hey, Hidami, what exactly is the story? Don't we say that everything at the end of the day translates into money? If you say that in the bowl it's worth one zuz, the aguda on the guda on the like the bank, like the rim, outside, right outside the bowl, Shavia Alba, it's worth four zuzim, right? The which means 
two pictures in eBay in nevelo.com, nevelo trade for sale.com, that's the One here, new brand, Nevela. If the photo shows Nevela inside the pit, it's worth automatically well, one zoos. If the Nevela is outside the pit, it's worth four because it's more accessible. So there are more buyers. People are obviously more tempted, more interested in buying a Nevela right here. It's right outside the bore. Feature, wow. But Shanky, the one inside the bore is going to be worth less in the eyes of the clients in the market. So Lemaisa, Prakdi Gemara, why do you have to tell me? Chidush, that the mazik is the one that has to schlep it. Ki torach, when the mazik is torach and does the hard work and gets the tollway company, but the nafshi torach, he's torach for himself, because he'll have to pay less at the end of the day. Let's say he pays a few Arabs, a few workers to schlep it out. It's worth less than Azuz. It's not worth that much. And Lemaisa is making a lot of money. It's an investment. You paint a few rooms in your house, and you, uh, I don't know, you plant a few flowers in the garden, it's going to make the house worth much, much work, much more than the investment. That's what investment is all about. Same thing over here. He's investing, the mazik is investing in the nevela being worth more, and nevela, he'll have to pay less cash, right? It's all the seesaw between cash and nevela, which means, let's say the nevela, $700 he has to pay, yes. The nevela inside the bore is worth I don't know, 100, let's say, outside the board, it's worth 300. That's just for his own good, right? He's the mice making the difference, the mazik. So why does the Torah have to tell me that a person should make his own money? There's not even the Torah, be a millionaire, make money. There's no such thing. Avada, that's his own interest. Why does the Torah have to tell me that? So Robert told him, the Torah does have to tell me that. Very interesting. The Bibira Shav Yezuza. We're talking about a case where inside the bow it's worth one zuz. The Aguda outside the bow in the Guda, like in the rim of it outside. Nami also Shav Yezuza. Wow. It's worth the same both inside and outside. Frag the Gemara, what everybody here wants to ask. Umi Ika Kiagavna. Is there such a thing that the, the item is worth the same even where it's less accessible? The Gemara answers in, yes. The Amri Inchi, the way that people talk, the way people say is the Amri Inchi, Kishura, the Kishura is the, the beam, yeah, the beam of wood. The Mata Bezuza, if it's inside the city, it's worth a Zuz. Kishura Bedaba Bezuza, and if it's in the desert or in the field, it's also Bezuza. I don't know why. I looked high and low, I didn't find what's the logic over here. I don't know why. Why is that so? But the Maisa, the Gemara seems to be saying maybe here people are more business savvy than I am. But Lamaisa the Gemara wants to say that many times, if an item is worth something, it's priced that way. So even if the What's his name? Even if the uh, buyer would have to go with his car and get it from a faraway place, it's still going to be worth the same. I'm selling, let's say, a second-hand book, I don't know, and it's worth, I don't know, 30 shekels. Wherever it is, I'm pricing in 30 shekels, whether it's here in the Ramah, or it's in Chavtiba, or it's in uh, Yefenov, wherever, it's always 30 shekels. So we say that from some reason here, it doesn't translate into money. And therefore, the niz, the mazik is not really making a difference. The mazik is not gaining from having the nevela outside. It's just hard work for him. And the Torah says, you're mazik. Because you're mazik, you have to schlep it out, and it's your responsibility to make them more accessible to the nizak. If anybody wants to tell me why is that true in business, I don't know. But as always, the and I'm sure there are explanations, but I didn't find any. Question quick, 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 and then we continue. Omar Shmuel. Now let's talk about thieves. Omar Shmuel. We spoke about certain nation before. Let's talk again. Omar Shmuel. Ain Shamin Loy Leganev Veloy Legazlan Enel and Izokin. Wow, 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 wow. Seshmuel as follows. Let's say somebody stole an item from his friend's house or was goizel, he forced it out of his hands, and now the item broke or the item is worth less. On Sunday, he stole it from his house. And on Wednesday, it's in the house of the Ganif, and the Ganif is in his house. It's now became worth less because it broke or something happened or it decayed or the animal got, I don't know, depressed, something happened, and now it's worth less. So now he has to give back the item. The question is, what is he gonna give? Let's say he's gonna give a broken 
uh, uh, let's say he stole uh, an MP3. He's going to bring back a broken MP3, which is worth less, much less. Maybe can be fixed by someone. It's not worth the fixing. The MP3 was worth three hundred dollars. Very, very expensive MP3. Ooh, very, very. Now it's worth only one hundred. So who's going to pay for the difference? The thief. And now the question is, what's the thief going to pay? Can the thief say like the mazik? Here's your broken MP3, and I'm so sorry I stole it. And the $200 that it's actually, yeah, that it lost value in my house, I'm giving you in cash. Can you say that? No. One minute. Ganev and Goslin cannot play that game. Ganev and Goslin have to, you keep the broken MP3, Mr. Ganev, says the owner. And that's, in most cases, that's what he would say. And give me one $300 clean cash. Why is that? There are two reasons. First of all, because you think there's a Kosov, kind of. Only by Nezikin we say Kesef Yoshiv Lebeolov. Yeah, and we also say Tashlum in Yeshalem. We pay the difference, Tashlumim. By Ganev Gazlan it says, Ve'eshiv Esekzeila Shel Gozal. Very good. It says you have to return what? Either give me, and that's Shulchan Aruch, either give me brand new MP3 worth 300, that's the Gzeila, or give me $300, nice with nice, straight, fresh, crisp notes. I'm joking, yeah? Give me $300 cash or a nice new, brand new one. But to give me a broken one plus a difference in cash, that by Ganev doesn't work. Only by Nezikin. Toysa says another reason. Toysa says a very, very interesting reason, which we should which we should know and we should also work with later on in the sugya. The Chiyuv of the Ganev is very different to the Chiyuv of the Mazik. Ganev is somebody which I'm sure you know already from other Masechtas. The Ganev actually does Kenyan, you know that. When, well, who's called, called a Ganev? Not somebody who plays around with someone's chefet. Somebody actually takes it and does Kenyan Meshicha or Kenyan Hagba, right? He actually took it from the domain of the owner and now he owns it only for Chiyuvim, doesn't really own it. He owns it, meaning that now he, it's his responsibility to give it back. Mimel, when was the Chiyuv of the Ganev created? When he took an entire object. You took an entire brand new nice MP3, you did it Hagba and you put it in your pocket. That's more Moment you became chayev. Mimela, if it broke, machpatli it broke. You owe me a brand new, a nice one or cash, nechon? Because that's when he was created, the time of Meshicha Ragba of the entire object. Meshenke by Mazik Mapitom. Our bulls were playing in the street, in the field, in I don't know where, in Regent's Park. They were playing somewhere, and then what? Then he gored the other one. When he gored him, nobody took your thing. Nezek is not about taking it from domain A to B. Wherever it happened, it's just about the Nezek. Mimela, when your show from 1,000 became 300, that's all I owe you. Because nobody actually took it, they diminished the value. Ah, diminish the value with Akasha. So take what you have, which is a dead uh, body, the corpse, the cadaver, the thing, and the, the rest I'll give you. It's very simple logic. Only by Nizikin. No questions for the next five minutes. I'm sorry. Vani Oimer. And I say, says Shmuel. And by the way, Shmuel says, Rashi, it's Mina Gedayonim. That's a Dayonim with the Mina. Shmuel was a master Dayan. He's telling you what's going on in the Dayonus world. Vani Oimer Afle Shoya. And I say also Shoyel, I'm not explaining what that means. The Abba Moideli and Abba, who's Abba Rav? Shmuel called his opponent Rav in a respectful way, Abba. And Abba Rav admits to me. What does it mean also Shoyel? Ibailu, what did you say about the Shoyel? Hachikoma, Afle Shoyel, Shamin, the Abba Moideli. When you compare, you mentioned two items in the Resha. You said Ganev Gazlan, no Shamin. There's no difference, but you have to pay everything. And for the mazik, you only pay the difference. You give the dead thing, and you pay the difference. And also shoyel, shoyel. Ooh, what's about what about shoyel? And first, shoyel is high for everything. Very good. Shoyel is also like, like who? Is shoyel like a ganav or is shoyel like a mazik? That's a question. Oidilma, you decided. Oh, good. I'm happy for you. Oidilma hachikoma. So we'll explain. Or maybe this is what it says. Vaniyama of l'shoyel ain shomin da'abamoydeli. Do we say that shoyel is shomin or not shomin? Let explain. Let me explain the question. A shoyel, very gishmak, is somewhere in between. A ganav. Don't pay me differences, Mr. Ganev. Why? You took the entire object. Look, Kenyan, Meshicha, Kenyan Hagba, Kenyan, whoop, into your pocket. 
Sunday, you came to a party in my house and you stole it. Now you have to pay me the entire thing. It's broken your house. The fact it broke in your house is second chapter. That doesn't make any difference. It doesn't faze me that it broke in your house. Machpatli, you, you have before it broke in your house. You have an actual gneva. And mazik is the other extreme. Mazik never took it from A to B. Right? Mazik only diminished the value wherever it was. So, of course, he only pays a difference because all he caused was a difference. A shayel is in between. The truth is, the whole thing of the Metzia, I'm a bit scared to talk. I'm just saying, in general, shayel is in between. What's a shayel? When a shayel came to your house and said, Can I borrow your drill, please? Of course, you say with a big smile and you give him your thousand dollars, black and decker, I don't know how much it's worth yet, the nice drill of thousand dollars. You give it to him, and at that moment, there's a Kenyan shayla. He's not a Ganov, he's a very, very nice guy, the best uh, honest guy in the world, but there's a Kenyan Sheila, which means let's say he regretted it, he's not a shoyal, or he just picked it or something. Once he pulled it out of your house, from your house to the Cheder Madrigot, and then to his house, to his apartment, at that moment he became Chayev by Meshicha, by Kenyan, on the entire object. On the other hand, the is not a Ganov, so right now there are no, he's not like in a crime scene yet. When it breaks in his house, even the oil, it's true, it's high on everything, except for Mesa Maximus Molocha. When in his house later something happened, I don't know, the drill broke because of his clumsy actions or something, then he becomes Chayev. But Lemais, there are two points of Chiyuvim. There's a the point of schlepping into his house where he became generally liable to anything that would happen. And there's also the second point of when it actually broke and then he really actualized that Chiyuv. Get me? There's getting into the story and there's a real breaking point, excuse the pun. So here we have a question. Do we look at the beginning and then say, Mr. Shoyle, I gave you brand new Black & Decker. Give me a brand new Black & Decker or $1,000 cash now because at the time you slept it out of assets. That's when you thought, or do you say, no, not true. It was better shoes. He didn't do anything wrong on the other end. When it broke in his house, from 1,000 became 300 because it broke Echshu. Then what? Then, on that is Chayv. So give me the broken thing plus 700. That is the question. Says Gemara Toshma. Let's see what the answer is. Oh, there was a man. Noah got it. Uh, here's a story. He borrowed the Narga is like an X, I think, right? It's like an X or a Ho, I think. It's an X. It's an X from his friend. Tavra, and he broke it. Classical case. He broke the X. Also, look at the Rav. He came to Rav. Omal is zil shlimli nalga mealia. You have to pay him a brand new mealia. Me uleshu bemule. Give him a nice, superb, brand new X. You have to give him not an X one, but an X with an A. Give him a good one. Shmami no ain shomin. You see, so you don't say give him the broken and pay the difference. You don't do a shuman evaluation of how much it's now, how much it's before. No, no, no monkey business. Give him a brand new one. A shoyel is treated like a ganav. He has to give a whole new one. Frag the Gemara, are you sure that's a psak? Adarabe, on the contrary, but the Amri Lerav Kanev, Rav Asi Lerav, as Rav Paskin the Halocha then, read the end of the story. Rav Kanev, Rav Asi told Rav, Dina Hachi, ahem, they didn't want to argue with the Rav, so they said, uh, is the Rabbi sure that that's a Halocha? Uh, is that so? Vishati, and he kept quiet. Rav didn't say yes and argued, the Rav was like, stumped by what they said. Shmamina, Shamin. In other words, they sort of diplomatically, respectfully argued with Rav, and Rav didn't seem to fight his point. So sounds like they were saying that you are sham, that a shoyal can give the broken pieces and pay the difference. And you give him the now $300 one and pay the difference, so you can say it's just the other way around. In other words, that discussion is not so clear. Itmal. So now let's find another source. Oma ula moblozo, shamin leganev ulegazlan. Shamil Ganev and Gazlan, yes, Ganev and Gazlan, that's no question. That, by the way, was not even a question. Ganev and Gazlan, everyone agreed. We're just beginning to read again the, the Mamras. That's why we mentioned it. Ganev and Gazlan, you stole. When you stole the shit out of my house, you took a brand new, give me back brand new. Mechutzas, you give me now the broken piece plus cash? No, give me a whole new one. But Rav Papi Omar, ain't Shomin, excuse me, ain't Shomin. Ah, okay, no, that surprises me. I do remember it. Rav Papi is an opinion that says even Beganev and Gazlan ain't. Oh, st- I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I don't have to erase what I said. No, excuse me, I'm wrong. Shomin Beganev and Gazlan is a chiddush. Excuse me. No, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. Erase what I said. Abulazo says a big chiddush. Sorry, excuse me. Abulazo says that even Beganev and Gazlan yes, Shomin. Shomin means the Beganev and Gazlan can give the broken piece. 
and the difference. That's a cool if I got a gazlan, I don't know why. But uh, it's like so not the halacha. And yesterday I looked a lot in Shulchan Aruch, so I became to uh, brainwash by the halacha lemaisa. The lemaisa, that opinion says even God of Gazan will be uh, makel on them, bring the broken pieces and the difference in money. Papi Omar ain shomin, vilchesa ain shomin, lo leganev, lo legazla. No question, halacha lemaisa, as I said all the time, God of Gazan, no shuma. You took it out, you bring back exactly the brand new one. Buy a new one in the shop, go down to the Merkaz, buy a new drill, a new MP3, a new phone, a new whatever, and give it back a new one, or cash. There's no paying the difference giving the broken one. Avalishoyel, oh, Avalishoyel, show me. And that is the final answer. Shoyel was a big question back and forth. A shoyel, show me. When it comes to shoyel, you do pay for the difference. You don't have to give him if you're shoyel and the black and decker broke in your house, in your hands, and it's your fault because shoyel always has to pay. Like Parrot said, a shoyel pays the difference. Give him the semi broken black and decker end, which is only now 300 instead of 1,000, and pay him 700 in cash. Like Rav Khan and Rav Asi's gentle nudge on Rav, and they were like saying, Are you sure? And Rav didn't say otherwise. So we assume that they are right, and they are right. The Shoyal can. And by the way, by the way, it does say, though, I'm hearing your question soon, that's all in the hands, all up to the Bailim. Let's say the owner tells the Shoyal, I want to fix the, the drill. So let's say the Bailim t- tells the Shoyal, I prefer you giving me the broken one and pay me the money and pay me the difference, yeah? Because it's not worth the same, then he can. It's up to the Bailim. But if the Bailim insists, in the case of Shoyal, in the case of Shoyal, if the Bailim insists on what? On, no, give me everything cash, he has no right to do that. The shoyel is shomin, right? The shoyel gives him the black and decker, the broken piece, and the cash. And the balm cannot demand otherwise. What about Ghanav and Gazlan? Ghanav and Gazlan, they have to pay either brand new, to buy him a brand new product, or cash. But let's say the owner, the one that was stolen from, the victim of the theft, says no. He says to the Ghanav, I prefer you giving me the broken pieces, and the difference in cash, of course, it's in the hands of the bailing of the Nignav, or the one stolen from, because it's his right. He's the one who's now, he's a plaintiff, he's the one demanding, and therefore it's his right. A quick question, because we didn't finish over in three minutes, but go ahead. Yeah, I'm listening to you, quick, quick, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Let's continue one more minute into the next sugya. The next sugya, till the end of the Omud, is nothing to do with the previous sugya, except for it's the same name, the same name of the same Amoyo. Yeah. This, this is, a, we're going to have now, today and tomorrow, a few statements all by Ula Omar Blozo. That's the only, as far as I know, the only common denominator between them is Ula on behalf of Blozo saying, sometimes the Gemara goes like that. The Gemara go, goes on a tangent and starts giving you, it's in Shabbos, that few days, there's the same thing. Yeah, it's just the many, many statements by the same two Amoyroim or one Amoyroim, which is quite rare. Obviously not a buying Rovo, that'll be the entire Shas, yeah? Amoyroim, which are less mentioned, and now we have, now is their time. Now they're on stage, and now they're saying, the Gemara brings down a lot of the statements. Let's just start a little bit. Let's give the Akdomo. Let's give the Akdomo, and maybe tomorrow we'll do the Sugya. Everybody knows that in times of the Holy Temple, what happens if a woman gives birth? Mazel tov gives birth, Mazel tov to you. And what happens? We see that if it's a boy, boy or oh boy, then she's Tome for seven seven days, and then 33 days she's tower. If it's a girl, she's told me for 14 days, very nice. What happens if she gave birth to a placenta? Well, there's always placenta, ha ha ha. It's a placenta, it's a shilia with, we don't know what's inside. In the hospital, they lost it, I don't know. There was a placenta with something inside. We don't know whether it's a boy or a girl. And also, yes, yeah, so we don't know if she's told me seven days or 14 days. She has to be told me 14 days, don't play games, you know, don't take chances. He gave birth to something was inside, we don't know what it was, it's dead. And they threw it in the garbage, unfortunately. And now what? Now she doesn't know what to do. Another question is, let's say the birth took place two days. Two days is not so difficult. Let's say came out of her body and it started before Shkia and ended after Seis. Let's say, yeah, within those 15 minutes, Lakula. So then the birth, the Shilia started going out on Sunday and finished going out, ended up going out on Monday. So when do you start counting Sunday or Monday? That's another question we're going to deal with, yeah? Because the halacha says when Roiv baby came out, that's when the tumor starts. With the shilia, we don't know if the majority of the baby was contained in the part which was on the first day or the second day. We don't know that. 
So then we are choshish both sides. Maybe the roiv came on the first day. Maybe the roiv came on the second day. So she has to really be tome 14 days, 15 days she has to be tome. Starting now, 14, and another 14 tomorrow, so to speak. Yeah, together it's 15 actually. Yeah, it's not 16. Yeah, because it's only one more from the beginning. Yeah, 14 plus one at the beginning. Okay, but that will be tomorrow, Mr. Hashem. Thank you very much. And may we not fall into any pits and not meet any bad bulls. Thank you very much. Yeah.